This is true. I accept jobs for the manager, not for the role. A manager is not gonna have full control over your salary, but they are gonna be able to control if they're giving you feedback. Just because your boss thinks something is easy doesn't mean that you think it's easy. And so having a boss that acknowledges what's been difficult for other people is a good sign that they will also listen to what is difficult for you when you come into that job. Hey guys, Nikki here. This video is for those of you guys that are currently looking for jobs, whether you're in the interview process or not. There are a ton of different things to consider about a job. There's your salary, PTO, recognition, your colleagues, the location, your ability to work from home, team morale, the type of work that you're doing, your trajectory in that job, work-life balance, and of course, your manager. Now don't get me wrong, all of these are important. But if a job is meeting your basic needs in all of those different categories, I think the most important differentiating factor should be who you're working for, who your manager is. In fact, I often tell people, and this is true, that I accept jobs for the manager, not for the role. This is because if you have a manager that understands where you want to go in your career and they truly care about you, you're going to go a lot further. So I've had managers that They'll go out of their way to recognize you. They'll be generous with your PTO. They'll create a positive work environment where you're not feeling run into the ground. And they'll be mindful of how everyone works effectively, even if it's not their personal preference. So think about the manager that lets everyone work from home despite them enjoying going to the office. So in my career, I've been really blessed with a lot of awesome managers. And some of the things that they've done for me are encouraging me to take jobs, even if it meant losing me listening to my suggestions about what we could do better, fighting for a higher salary for me, recommending me for special opportunities like mentoring programs, and also allowing me to do special projects that changed the course of my career. So as an example, I only got into product management because I was pushed into it probably before I was ready by a really great former boss of mine. So how do you go about finding a really good manager in the interview and job hunting process? The first way you can spot a good manager is if they want to know your career ambitions as early as the interview process. So think about questions like, where do you see yourself going in five years? It's a good time if they're asking you about more than just, I really regretted it. There was actually a different manager in that interview process who did ask me questions about that. And when I actually accepted the job, he's the one that ended up being my mentor and the one I wish I had worked for in the long run. And I actually ended up leaving that job within about a year because I didn't really feel supported in the changes that I thought that we should be making and where I thought we could take our work a step further. And also just, I didn't, I didn't see myself building a usable skill set. If you interview with peers, it's such a good opportunity to ask questions about the leadership and management style of, of the person who would be your boss. Consider asking questions like, can you tell me how this manager promotes individual growth? You could also ask, is there anything that you wish you could change about the team? And you want to look out for things that are within the manager's control. Do they have complaints about work-life balance? Are they not receiving enough feedback? Are they wanting more opportunities for growth or recognition? So as an example, a manager is not going to have full control over your salary, but they are going to be able to control if they're giving you feedback. So as an example of this, I once interviewed for a company where multiple people on the team voiced a very similar concern. They were saying that they didn't feel like the work was being prioritized effectively by their leadership team. Now, that's not just the manager being at fault there, but the manager does have influence over that. And if the manager isn't able to protect the team from some of that, it indicates some other issues kind of upstream. Either the manager isn't doing the best job prioritizing the work, or the culture is not allowing the manager to do the job that they need to do. Either way, at the time, that didn't seem like the best environment for me personally that I wanted to walk into. So also, take the time to ask about the manager's leadership style and pay attention to if the answers vary because that's actually a good thing. Now, I'm gonna go on a slight tangent. <laughs> there's something called the situational leadership theory, and it says that there's no one best management style. The best management style flexes to the, the needs and the competencies of their team members at that point in time. So as an example, if you have one person on your team that is brand spanking new, fresh out of college, doesn't know how to do anything, they're going to be like gung-ho and excited to learn everything. 
and they are probably going to need you to walk them through every single thing that they need to do all the time. And that's okay because they're new. Now, if you've got someone that's been there for three years, they are not going to want you to walk them through every single thing that they need to do because they probably know how to do it. Especially if they're good at their job, they're going to find that approach pretty condescending, but they will want someone that is kind of validating their approach, someone they can bounce ideas off of. Now, if you took that same kind of bouncing ideas off approach to the new person that really has no idea what they're doing, they're going to feel completely lost and like out at sea by themselves. And that's not helpful either. So you need someone that can take multiple approaches depending on what the situation requires. As a sidebar, I personally love this theory. And if you want me to do a deep dive video on it another time, please let me know in the comments because I seriously find it fascinating. So the third way that you can spot a good manager is to find out if the role was a backfill or not. If it's a backfill, you want to find out why that person left. Did they get promoted into a new position, whether it's internal or external to the company, or did they take a lateral? Now, the reason why that's important is if it's a promotion, I think that's a good thing. It means that the role prepared them well for whatever they wanted to do next. Like they were learning a lot. They were probably getting feedback that helps them grow. And there's not a clear like stifling of their potential. If the person took a lateral, there's a little bit of digging that you want to do and just finding out like how long they were in the role, were they successful in the role, things like that. If they left for a lateral, the context there is important. So as an example, if they were there for a couple of years and just felt like they needed a change, that's not a bad thing. I think that happens to a lot of folks, especially if they don't have a ton of desire to move up really quickly. Getting a lateral is a great way to get that breadth of experience. But if they left within, let's say a year, then that's probably an indicator of some other issue within the team, often to do with the manager. So that example I gave earlier with that boss that I just did not click with, I left that role right about at my first anniversary. And also I'll just say that as a manager myself, I take a ton of pride in my employees being promoted out because it means that I prepare them well for what's next. So I would hope that if the manager did have someone that was promoted out, that they would be excited for that person. So the fourth way that you can spot a good manager is by asking what they see as the biggest learning curves for a person coming into their team. Now there's a couple different answers you could get. If you get something that's super generic, like, oh, you know, learning about the company and like our culture and all that is like really difficult. It doesn't tell you a whole lot. And to me, that says that they're not paying attention enough to what's difficult about that role. If they get into some nitty gritty around like a particular task or a particular project being challenging or stakeholders that have unique personalities that you'll be working with and things like that, that's where you can tell if they're paying a lot more attention and whether or not they'll be attentive to you. You also want to have a manager that acknowledges what things are difficult or what's easy in your reality. Just because your boss thinks something is easy doesn't mean that you think it's easy. And so having a boss that acknowledges what's been difficult for other people is a good sign that they will also listen to what is difficult for you when you come into that job. So also if a manager brings up things that they use to get someone up to speed when they join, I think that's also a good thing. And I have been both a good and bad manager in interviews when asked about this. As an example, one thing that I think would be part of my good manager answer is that I have found that because we work with so many different stakeholders, one thing that set people up for success is when I have them meet for about 30 minutes with a lot of different people when they first join. That way they've got people in different areas that they know that they can rely on for questions. They're not having to, to move every question through me and they feel like they can start to get more independent right away. And finally, ask what's the biggest challenge that that manager is facing right now and pay attention to kind of like the scope of control of that answer. So are they talking about something that is affecting the entire team or are they looking at something that's affecting more of them or the company as a whole? Now, I don't think it's necessarily bad to have it be more manager or company focused, but I think if they're talking about something that's plaguing the team that they are trying to resolve or address, that's a good thing because again, it tells you that they're paying attention to what their team members are saying and feeling. So no matter what, throughout the job hunting process, make sure to just trust your own gut. If you don't think that that manager is going to be good to work with, 
don't take the job. It's just not worth it. You spend too much of your time working to work in a job that you totally hate if you can avoid it. I hope this helps you guys. Please drop a like and subscribe if it did so that you can see more of my videos in the future. Thanks and have a great rest of your day.